transplant surgeon at Carolina's Medical Center. Okay. Hey, you know, we do kidney transplants, okay. pancreas transplants, and liver transplants. So, in my group, we also do heart transplants here, but that's a, a different group of surgeons. Okay. Uh, how, many, how many transplants do you do a year? Well, we do about 100, and, anywhere between 120 and 150 kidney transplants well, a year. I think like probably 60 seven, liver transplants a year. Okay. Maybe a half dozen pancreas transplants. Mm, like, how long is the process of finding the right mass, the surgery, and the recovery? How long does that usually take? Well, the for, for the speaking of the recipient to find the yeah. kidney for them, if they don't have a living donor, then, then they go on what's called the transplant list, and that takes years for them. The list is very long. Yeah. So there's many, 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 many more people in need of a kidney than there are kidneys available. Yeah. So it depends on the blood group. If you're blood group B, which is the longest list, it could be seven years of waiting. If you're blood group A, which is the, the fastest moving list, it's, it's still three to four years probably. So the supply, the demand is higher than the supply? Way, way higher than the supply. Mm. Uh, on the, if you're on the waiting list, is it like a first come first serve, or is it like priority? Well, that's a complicated question too, and it's changing. There's a um, there's national regulations for that. It's mm -hmm. something called the United Network for Organ Sharing, and there's a, a, a committee that um, for years has been working on. I used to be on the committee of you know, deciding how to allocate mm -hmm. kidneys. Um, and, the, pro and, and the, the process is just going to change in the next year. They've already approved the change, and what it's going to be is the, the, the date, from the date the patient uh, um, had a glomerular filtration rate below 20, which is approaching end stage. And it's not quite dialysis, but, but, but once your glomerular filtration rate goes below 20, you're almost ready for dialysis. Okay. At, at that point, um, they start counting days, yeah. and so it's it's usually the people that get the kidney are the people that have the most days of waiting. Yeah. So it's it's a much fairer system. Um, in the past, it used to be people would get referred by, by their their um, primary doctor mm -hmm. because they knew they had kidney disease. They mm -hmm. go to a nephrologist, and the nephrologist would send them here to the transplant center. Mm -hmm. We couldn't. Tra transplant them until their GFR, the glomerular filtration rate, got below 20. And, and usually you wouldn't do it until you got to about 15 or 12. Um, but they would get on the list once we evaluated them, and their days would start counting. And then there would be other patients who um, just didn't get as good of care um, as the one I just described. And maybe they um, um, were on dialysis you know, for th two, three, four, five years, Some usually in the rural parts of the state before somebody actually said, well, you ought to come get a transplant. And then they yeah. would come here and they would get worked up and they would go on our list. And they would start accumulating days. Yeah. Now that's going to be a little fairer because if a person like that comes to us, we get them on our list, but their days count depending upon when they went on dialysis. Yeah. You know, it, could be, they, yeah. it could come at three years time okay. accrued now. Yeah. But, but it's mostly just by, by waiting time. Yeah. There are a couple other factors that go into it, but it's mostly just waiting time. And can you kind of explain dialysis a little bit? What exactly it is? It well, dialysis, it, it's a, 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 an artificial kidney, it's a machine that, that you get hooked up to. Uh, I mean, that's hemodialysis, which is the most common. Yeah. And, and the, uh, the patient's uh, blood is run through the machine, and the machine filters the toxins out and then returns the blood to the patient. Uh, without that, it, that, that was invented during World War II, um, though it didn't come into common usage until like the late 1960s, early 1970s. Yeah. So if, if this were the 1950s and you got yeah. kidney failure, transplantation didn't work yeah. back then, and dialysis really wasn't widely available, so you just died. Yeah. Um, now we do have dialysis, and it, it, it's you have to go on the machine you know, at least three times a week, um, and, and it's it's not perfect because there's a, a lot of vascular disease and heart disease 
that accumulates over time. Mm -hmm. If you're on dialysis for several years, the yeah. mortality is kind of high, but it's it's better than the alternative. Yeah. But the best alternative is to get a kidney transplant even yeah. before you have to go on dialysis. Mm -hmm. We have living donors available. Mm -hmm. If a person gets referred in a timely fashion, their, their glomerular filtration rate, yeah. say, is been monitored and it goes from 30 to 25 to 20 yeah. and it, the, the primary care doctor can tell that they're going to need dialysis. If, if they get referred pre-dialysis and, and they have a family member or friend who can give them a kidney, mm -hmm. then, then we'll do the kidney transplant even before they ever have to go on dialysis and, and that preserves their health for that. And if, if there was a market, what would be like some of the pros and cons of it? I mean, we're allowing people to, to sell kidneys? Yeah, not necessarily like, here's 50 grand in your kidney, but like maybe tax breaks or something. Right, the, 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 um, it's a contentious um, subject, and, and I, I, I'm for the, the idea because the, the, there's, yeah, it could be a win-win situation. Yeah, um, uh, people say it's discriminatory because only the less yeah, affluent would be. Yeah. Come forward, and and, and you know that that's the, the, the con. Mm -hmm. The pro is that that um, certainly for the recipient, it's that it, 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 a live yeah. donor kidney is so much better than a kidney from a deceased donor. Yeah. Um, the the um, pro for the person who gives it is that they do get compensated for it, and uh -huh. whether it, it's cash, whether it's lifetime. Yeah. free medical care yeah. or, um, uh, there are many ways to make a payment but it would be a yeah. financial yeah. incentive and it would be a, a, a big win for um, just the resource utilization so say the, the government pays for it now predominantly mm -hmm. we, we have their private insurance that, that pays some but when you have end-stage renal disease mm -hmm. um, People with end-stage renal disease automatically qualify for Medicare, oh, even right. if they're only 20 years old, yeah. they, they, they qualify for Medicare. Um, and so it's the government that really is paying yeah. for it. And the cost of dialysis, the yearly cost of dialysis is, is probably something like $60,000 a year, year after year after year. Yeah. And the patients don't do that well. As the years go on, they develop yeah. vascular disease, and so they're, they're the cost goes up year after year, yeah. actually. Whereas a kidney transplant, maybe in the first year, it, it costs you know, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars altogether. Um, but then, it, presuming it's successful and 95% and of them are successful, the long term costs are just the cost of the medications to keep the organ from being rejected, which yeah. you know might be ten or twelve thousand dollars per year. So yeah. so you really have a net fifty thousand dollars a year you're saving yeah. year after year after year. So it's it's much more cost effective. Yeah. And other than cash, what would be a good way to reimburse the donor? Uh, anything other than cash? What would you like to see? Well I mean I I, I leave that to the politicians to say <laughs> I guess but, uh, uh, I, I like the idea of, of free medical care, uh, yeah. because if anyone who's given a kidney, well, in, 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 even if you haven't given a kidney, you ought to have right. access to medical care, you ought yeah. to know what your blood pressure is, you know what your cholesterol is, mm -hmm. keep your weight healthy, don't smoke, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so you should be in the medical system, and many, many, many people aren't, yeah. uh, and then they show up all of a sudden, because they don't feel well, and they, they have kidney failure, oh, which right. maybe could have been prevented had they gotten care all yeah. along, and that's what people were too healthy kidneys to begin with. Yeah. If you only have one kidney, because you've given the kidney, I mean, you, you, you uh, definitely should, should, should get health care. <coughs> and, and I think, actually, we don't have a registry for how donors have done, not a mandatory registry. Yeah. But we have, uh, we and other centers have, to the best we can, track how, how our donors yeah. do. And, and when you, when you uh, and there are several papers on the literature you could look at yeah. that, have thousands of donors at the track, and when you look at how they've done over the years, they actually are healthier and live longer than, um, say, what the life insurance tables yeah. say that they should. So they tend to be healthier than the general population. Now, of course, they're a select group because they weren't allowed to donate 
until they'd gone through a, a fairly rigorous medical evaluation and they truly were healthy. Yeah. There, there are people in those life insurance tables that, that um, that's just the general population. They look at how, how you know, a cohort of 25 year olds, yeah. you know, a, a few of them will, will die, not very many each year, but you know, maybe a 25 year old has a 50 year life expectancy until age 75 or 80, something like that. But some of those 25 year olds or, or 30 year olds are, have, if you look at them closely, they have hypertension, they have diabetes that haven't been diagnosed. The people that donated a kidney don't have any of those diseases because that would have ruled them out. So, so they were a little healthier to begin with, but then I think people that give a kidney um, tend to be, I would be, I'd hope, paranoid, and I would go be yeah. sure I saw a doctor or yeah. knew what my blood pressure was. Yeah. You know, I, I, we have a lot of people that are, are responsible, really um, good people who just never went to a doctor because they just never felt sick, yeah. and they were just too busy to go to a doctor, and then they show up with kidney failure or with a heart attack when they're 50, yeah. and they've had maybe have high blood pressure for 10 years and didn't even know it, and the first sign of it was, you know, they have a heart attack, yeah. say. That doesn't happen to the donor population, because yeah. they're seeing doctors, and if they develop high blood pressure, which is common to develop as mm -hmm. we get older, they will know it the year it happens, because they're seeing a doctor every yeah. year, and then if they take medicine for the high blood pressure, they don't have yeah. the high blood pressure anymore, so then they don't end up with the stroke yeah. and the heart attack. So they do well. Yeah, and if a 20 to 25 year old did give up a kidney, they could live the rest of their life normal, sure. active, and oh, yeah. like any other day. Yeah, in fact, the first successful living donor kidney was in December of 1954. Mm -hmm. And the fellow who gave it, I think he was like 24 years old at the time, and, and he uh, just died a couple of years ago. Oh, wow. Um, you know, so he was in his 80s. I mean, he, 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 he lived a full life. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, if it was, if the market was legalized, do you do you see people? Do you see a lot of lives being saved due to not finding a donor? Oh, I mean, you say many, 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 many lives. I mean, there are over a hundred thousand people waiting for a kidney today. And, and, and there's probably another hundred thousand that should be referred that are yeah. out there somewhere that haven't been referred. Yeah. And right now, we don't make a big push to find those patients because we only have 10,000 kidneys a year. Yeah. And, and each year, we get more than 10,000 people added to the list, and we only transplanted 10,000. So you can look at the statistics in the reference books, but I bet you five years ago, there was probably 75, 80,000 people on the yeah. list. Now there's like over 100,000. Yeah. Five years from now, there's going to be 150,000 on the yeah. list. And, and so we need more yeah. organs. Yeah. Mm. If it was the guys, you would be you'd be for it. I would be for it. Uh, there's a fellow here you, you you might also want to talk to named Ben Hippen, who's one of our nephrologists, mm -hmm. uh, and he's published. Uh, he has a he majored in philosophy when he was in uh, wow. college, and, and he has a real real strong interest in this, and, and he's published quite a few articles on mm -hmm. it, given talks on it, and he's he's feels like I feel that, that yeah. it should be. Uh, a okay thing to do, but it is against the law, so you can't do it uh, yeah. now. And the leadership of the transplant groups in the Western world mm -hmm. have said it's it's not ethically. They think it's discriminatory mm -hmm. to poor people, and I don't quite understand that because mm -hmm. uh, um, it, it, if you can have a, a volunteer army in the United States, mm -hmm. quote unquote volunteer army. Um, and then you look at who quote unquote volunteers to go in the army and then go to Afghanistan and Iraq, mm -hmm. it, it isn't a cross section, it, it, it tends to be the less affluent yeah. kids who, they get great training in the army because mm -hmm. they can't afford to go to college, yeah. you know, but, but, but um, if, you, if that is ethical, I don't see why it isn't ethical to give a kidney, which is a lot safer than going into the army and going to Iraq or Afghanistan, um, but it's, it's a contentious area. Yeah. So you'd be for it? I'd be for it. I don't think it's going to happen anytime yeah. soon. Yeah, I think, I think that wraps it up. Okay. I really appreciate it. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Sure.